always amazes me when fans, even though you may have met these people uh, dozens of times, you know, in backstage situations or at fanfare or whatever, how excited they all get, you know, every time they get a chance to come up and see you. Well, when you like somebody, you like them. You'll do about anything. I just really think Travis is terrific. I just love him to death. I'm number one all the way with him. He's a good boy. Still he can't believe how people come from all over the USA. From Maine to Michigan, over 800 fans were treated to a members-only country club performance. There's only members are allowed in here. I said, baby. They never lose that enthusiasm. And that's a cool thing for me because, uh, you know, some of these people have been to several hundred shows. And they still keep coming back. And I sit there sometimes and wonder, gosh, why? You know, but they're, uh, they're great fans, and God knows we love them. I'd really be surprised how many country stars do not know how to line dance. <laughs> used to thinking musically and, and you just don't think um, with your feet. I'm used to thinking, you know, with my voice. It's just a way to have fun with them in a different kind of way. You're not so much performing at them, you're, you're interacting. At Melrose Bowling Lanes, Terry Clark walked into her very first fan club party a little bruised and very awestruck. It was very touching. I mean, I got emotional there for a second. I was like, it's embarrassing. It's just like... I'm looking around for somebody important to be standing near me or something. It's still pretty wild. Sometimes I laugh, sometimes I cry, sometimes I do both and I don't know why. Her fans knew all the words to all the songs, even though this mini concert wasn't planned. After her softball accident at Sunday's City of Hope game, Terry wasn't sure what she'd do at the party, but she says she's healing well. I uh, fractured my sinus uh, air, area there in the uh, cavity, yeah. There's a little blood drainage, but other than that, it's mostly soft tissue and the swelling's gone down and my face is green and red and purple and all kinds of weird colors, but it was like, it was like gross looking the first day. But I'm better. I'm, I'm feeling 100% better today. Fans quickly lined up for time with Terry. They don't know how much I love them, and I just appreciate everything that they've done for me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing this. This is just, like, unbelievable. I love my job. I hope I can keep doing it for a long, 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 long time. I'll do it as long as they can. Casey and the bird watchers, as his fan club members are called, have taken over the Hermitage Bowling Lanes, which is across town from Terry's party. But what we're trying to find out is we know he can fish, but can Tracy bowl? It's how Mark Chestnut bowls. Photo! Maybe Chestnut's got the right idea. Yeah! Up! Oh! Gutter ball! Dinner! Ah! Uh, that's terrible! Just like your golf game! But I wouldn't say that, uh, that I'm a great bowler by any means. Uh, uh, I just... Uh, I thought it'd be fun for everybody to come bowl. Because bowling's something you don't have to be good at to, to have a good time. <laughs> We're getting ready. We're taking our tic tacs for Tracy Bird. We want to have fresh breath. Tracy also spent some one-on-one -on -one time with his fans, including 14-year-old David Dushner from Monticello, Iowa. His dream was to come to Nashville to Tracy's party, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation made it come true. Well, I like all of his music, and he's a great performer, and just a really nice guy. He, uh, even though he's got such a great outlook, I'm sure he gets down at times, and if, if something we do can give him a good memory, and, and uh, you know, I told him, we gave him a phone number and told him anytime he wants to come out to a show or bring his family or whatever he wants to do, give us a call, because we can help him out, we'll do it. You just never know what's going to happen, do you? We had a lot of nice guests. Actually, uh, Charlie Pride stopped by and sang a couple of songs for us. And Dallas Cowboy quarterback Troy Aikman was even in the audience. It's Troy and uh, Joe Avizano, which is a special teams coach from the Cowboys. and It was nice to have them stop by and, and enjoy the music with us this afternoon. They're both really big country music fans as well. That's how a cowgirl breaks the young man's heart. That's how the whole world slowly came apart. After a command performance from Tracy, fans started lining up for autographs. Signing for everybody here. That's usually what we do. So I'll try to take care of my fan club people at the first part of the week, and then I'll be out in the booth uh, Wednesday and Thursday signing autographs for the fans at the fan fair.
Did you enjoy the show today? I did. I was loved it. Was it nice, it. Uh, the variety of music and the different people? I was. I was going to love Charlie Pryor. I think One. he is awesome. One. I'm a big fan of him. He's just too sweet. Rebecca. R-E-B-E-C-C-A. Tracy wasn't the only one signing autographs and posing for pictures. His wife, Stacy, even got into the act. What's your name, honey? Robert. Robert. Jeff and Jay Robert. I think we figure out a little bit more every year. It's getting more organized. And uh, the, the first couple were uh, a little uh, out of control, I guess you'd say. We had a couple of rough ones, but they seem to be smoothing out a lot these days. Your shorts? Yeah, right here. <laughs> Don't look. I love this store. It has a great atmosphere about it. Um, I, uh, one of the things we've always tried to do is uh, be fan friendly. I love my fans, and Jennifer, they love her. She's always worked at Fanfare during our booth. Her and my mom, my dad's here. So it's a family affair here today, and so come by if you're ever in Nashville to Jennifer Stewart's store. Something here. They got so much stuff, you gotta like something. Country Fast 97! This is not a concert, this is a happening. It was a happening that drew more than 200,000 screaming country music fans to Fort Worth. The Texas Motor Speedway was turned into a giant honky-tonk for Country Fest 97. Charlie Daniels, Leanne Rimes, Randy Travis, and Winona kept the crowd on its feet and begging for more during the 14-hour show. You got to find somebody to love you. It's not normal, but I love you. So how do you play to an audience that's almost in the next county? If you're Garth, you can like hook up to a cable and fly over there, but I, I can't. So. I was looking forward to the happy end. So much for pretending. No, Brian White just walked on stage and played his heart out. But Neil McCoy found another way to see the crowd besides climbing the stage rigging. He served as a roving reporter for the upcoming CBS special. So you've been doing some reporting today, so do I have to like, should I, should I be no, worried? No, actually, you see, I, let me show you what I've been doing all day. Uh -huh. And I'm going to just give you a prime example. Okay, uh -huh. Country Fest 97, here we are. With, I have said that so many times today. Water really turns me on. Neil had the crowd shaken, but it was both Cephas that worked them into a frenzy. While it was hot on stage, it was even hotter down in the crowd. The fans braved the sweltering heat any way they could to see their favorite stars. Some fans didn't quite last until Vince Gill hit the stage, but closer Travis Tritt says the masses gave their all. And that's something he can appreciate. I love what I do for a living. And I played so many bars and so many honky-tonks and so many clubs for so long to nobody that I'm a thankful guy to have anybody out there, you know, much less, you know, two, three hundred thousand people. So what about Country Fest 3? We did it last year in Atlanta. We're doing it this year in Fort Worth. and. Uh, Hopefully, we'll do it somewhere next year. Maybe in Mount Jude. I keep the smile on my face. I want to drive my car. Without a doubt, Winona knows the secret to pumping up a crowd. She also knows the secret to throwing a smoking fan party. They give me validation, sure. But they make me feel alive, like I matter to them. Because they matter to me. You know who I'm singing to. I'm singing right to that person sitting right there. And you know what I mean, Joe? I love you, Joe. Whether it's singing to one fan or thousands, Winona has made an impact on the masses. And there are two other little ones that Winona has an effect on. And she proudly showed them off to her fans. And she prepared the crowd for more surprises. Well, there are men who turn your hair and knock you off of your feet. But they never expected this. Or this. Tie and why. What a concept. And there was more. I once was lost, but now I am found. Well, a woman's got to do what a woman's got to do. And I need really good looking men around me who can sing. She's been there for me several times, and personally and professionally. So uh, anything she wants, she gets it. <laughs> As far as fanfare, I think uh, um, I would personally like to see a lot more of the 
of this going on with the artists supporting each other and, and being a part of the, of the fan base. And there were even tips for surviving fanfare. Um, stay cool, drink a lot of water, and don't eat too many biscuits and gravy. Am I the luckiest girl in Nashville today or what? Good advice. Fanfare kicked off Monday with a Magnetone Records showcase featuring newcomer Carol Mack Parker. Tender love is blind. It requires a dedication. The venerable Kenny Rogers made his first appearance here in 10 years. Fans got a real treat at the River North Nashville show Monday afternoon when singer-actress Crystal Bernard asked her dad, Jerry, to join her. Before the day ended, fans enjoyed 15 bluegrass groups, including Allison Krauss and Union Station. Here is your top vocal band in country music, Sawyer Brown. Crook and Chase woke up the Tuesday morning crowd with a little help from Sawyer Brown. Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home tonight. Come on, y'all scream and yell! Leanne Rhymes kept the excitement going. The moment peaked, though, when Tim McGraw sang his current smash hit with a surprise visit from wife Faith Hill. It's your love that just does something to it sends a shot right through me. It was her first public appearance since giving birth seven weeks ago. The Mercury Showcase proved to be a testing ground for new material. John Anderson sang a brand new song. She looks a pound, but she ain't ready. She's into football, she likes my chili. Somebody slap her. He's an evil charmer. Shut it up. Keep out the devil. He's hungry for his soul to hurt. Shut it up. Kathy Matea got the crowd going and didn't even need instruments. The day after winning single of the year, Billy Ray Cyrus pleaded with his fans to support his next single. I want to say thanks to you fans for not forgetting about us. You're the greatest, most giving, loving, caring bunch of people in the world. Call your radio stations, tell them you want to hear it. It's all the same to me. And Fanfare's second day came to a close with Trisha Yearwood sporting curls. I like a man who will stand up to me That's what I like about you. Oh, my goodness. This is so exciting to be here. Capitol Records is just kicking some daggone country honey, I think. Wednesday That's morning, John Barry got the early risers going with a sing-along. Okay. One, two, one, two. Whoa, whoa. That's good. Let me hear y'all in the back. All the time. I stop it. Capital Nashville took care of some business on stage. Dina Carter received a triple platinum award for her debut album. Thank you all so much for all the support. And Chris Ledoux's gone gold with his 30th album. Took long enough. Yeah, oh, come on, come on. Warner Reprise Records was also in a giving mood. Debuts from both Paul Brandt and comedian Bill Engvall were certified gold. Oh, man. Sun comes up. Goes down. Little Texas received some overdue honors. Their greatest hits album went gold, platinum for Kick a Little, and Big Time was certified double platinum. Hey, 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 hey. Female vocalist of the year Lori Morgan hosted the RCA BNA record show. Like the rain, I am falling for you. Clint Black surprised the crowd with an unannounced performance. And vinyl-clad Mindy McCready capped off the evening. Yeah, boys, don't you know it ain't a party? Yeah, till the girls arrive. Ask you, uh, some of these people we know pretty well. Diamond Rio, are you fans at all of Diamond Rio? Yes. You like them? Uh-huh, I saw them when I first came out with Alan Jackson. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Now, 
Have you, have you, so you've been to one of their shows then? Have you ever met any of them? No, I've never got never to meet them. Would you want to meet them? Oh, yeah. Well, how about what's going on? Hi, how y'all? Let, let me just introduce you. Marty Rowe, Dana Williams. Hi, how y'all doing? Yeah, you, sure. Let me get a, let me get a hug here. You got to, you got to tell them, you got to introduce yourself. You can't just say hi. Tammy. Kathy. Kathy, Kathy. Uh, where y'all from? Clements, Ohio. Hey, all right. We're Close to there. Mile. There we were. Yes. There was she Clay went to Walker. your show. Oh, really? Yeah, she went to your show. Really? How was it? It was great. Good answer. <laughs> twice. I saw you with um, Alan Jackson a long time ago. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, good. Thank you. Glad you guys, it. actually, I'm going to duck under the camera here. Let me get on, the other, let me get on the other side okay. here. So we got a microphone on either side. Now, you guys, you guys have been out here all week long doing just this, meeting fans, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I know it's hot. I know it's long lines. But I know you also like to do this stuff, really, don't you? Actually, we've been, uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's funny. It, it, you see this week coming, it's like you almost kind of, you know what's ahead and you kind of dread it. And every time it gets here, it's just a ball of fun, man. It's like, man, there's no need in dreading that, man. I mean, we, we were at our uh, fan club breakfast this morning and just a great time, man, over there. So it's just a lot of fun out here. Why weren't you all at their fan club breakfast? We're not currently enrolled in their fan club. Oh, well. We're going to Tracy Lawrence's this week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next year. We'll have, year. To, we'll have yeah. to do that. Yeah, there you go. Well, I think right. we could probably arrange to get you a membership if we really had to. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm gonna, I want to put you on the spot here just for a second. So often we try and ask the questions that the fans want to ask. Here's your chance to ask a couple of big-time country music stars a question. What would you like to know from these guys? Do you ever have any free time? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, a lot of it's spent on the bus going down the road, so we have to kind of make up something to do inside. But uh, we do. Usually we come into town, we have uh, time to go fly airplanes like Dana does or play golf. And every now and then we get to spend some time at home. You ever going to sit back and enjoy other stars' concerts? Or? You know, fortunately, the, the people that, you know, we're, we do shows with different ones. And I got to say, it is nice to be able to go out and see the different ones you know we didn't hardly ever get to go see anybody just go and sit in the audience and just hang out watch the show and leave you know but uh, uh, i want to <laughs> okay now i gotta ask a question here or else they're gonna realize that i'm expendable and they can hire you <laughs> in my place so, so marty and dana you guys have recently completed a greatest hits album yeah that's coming out when july july 15th the thing I always wonder about a Greatest Hits album is how do you know when it's time? You know, how do you know when you're ready to put one of those things out? Well, we, you know, we really weren't going to do that, you know, have a Greatest Hits. We were working on the next album, which will actually follow this one now. Um, and Tim Dubois actually came to us and said, you know what, guys, we, it's time to have a Greatest Hits album. And we were like, no way, you know, and then we got to looking and counting. We have had 17 hits and... Uh, and it was time, you know. We were able to squeeze 11 of them on this album. We put two new songs on there, one of which is already out. It's called how, That's How Your Love Makes Me Feel. And it looks like it's already doing pretty well. For yeah, already right? doing have, have good. Have you two heard it on the radio, the new song? Have you? Yes. Hey, there you go. And you love it, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And then I noticed uh, the other the other new cut I saw you gave a struggling songwriter, Brian White, yeah. he has to make a dollar or two. Bless his heart. He <laughs> needs some help. You I, know, know. Um, I know he's really been hurt. Now, when... Uh, when fanfare is over, which is tomorrow, is that sort of the unofficial start to the fair and festivals? Do you guys really start to hit the road? Yeah, Does it everybody is. everybody do that? Yeah, pretty much. Matter of fact, uh, we're actually going to work over at the Geo Theater tonight at Opryland. We've got right, another really? show today. And then uh, we leave for Texas, and we do uh, a show in Dallas. We do a show at Six Flags in Houston. And then we're back for about four days, and then we're gone to the West Coast doing all the fairs and festivals and all that. Hey, Dana, uh, they got to ask you a question. Let me give you a chance. This is their first time backstage. You guys live backstage. You got any backstage advice for them? Uh, backstage advice. Uh, first off, backstage, you pretty much can't hear or see anything. <laughs> so I, my advice to you is try to find somebody that gets you a pass you out front. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Fanfare 1997. Oh my God, they're here. Hey, give me your bed. Hey, look right there. You're on TNN. <laughs> this is my crystal right here. Uh, this is my new girlfriend. Uh, say, 
Say hi to everybody, sweetie. Uh, I gotta go back to work. Yeah, you do that, Richard. The work's not too hard here, though. It's actually a love fest. Put on a very good show last night. Newcomers like Leanne Womack and David Kirsch are amazed at the turnout. It's awesome. I love this. It's nonstop. 24 hours a day entertainment, almost. This is Brian White's fourth fanfare, so he's an old pro now. This year I'm more relaxed and, you know, in knowing that I kind of knew what to expect this time, so... And there's a few people that know who I am this year, so... <laughs> Winona's walked into her booth plenty of times, too, but she's not sure how to put the experience into words. Sweat. Love. Sweat. Adoration, um, pressing of flesh. <laughs> and what's the key to surviving the sweat and the lines? Loyal fan Tom Bell has an answer. Oh, just a lot of patience and uh, the, the, the want and the desire to meet the people and, and, and see their stars that they want to see. They come long distances. They put up with a lot of aggravation. They stand in these little hot buildings and out in the sun. And, you know, it's just a, it's, it's a real testament to the popularity of country music. These are the greatest fans, the most loving folks in the whole wide world. And getting to be here and listen to them sing. I mean, they're just the greatest fans in the whole wide world, partner. You usually know more about me than I know about me. No, Brian's not talking about the Secret Service. He's talking about the members of his fan club. I'm betting this all in a matter of time. Of course they know his favorite color and his fondness for the Three Stooges. And they can certainly sing the words to his latest hit. And this time they got to participate in the celebration of his fifth number one song, Sitting on Go. What we would like to do is we're going to put this up where Brian is signing and we would like each one of y'all to sign this. Uh... Asylum Records gave Brian his very own racing flag to show how fast his song zoomed to the top. Usually if it clears the top ten and we, we start going, okay, maybe there's a chance here. And, and then, uh, But I, I'm proud of the song. It's, I, I wouldn't have recorded it if I, if I wouldn't have thought it was a number one record. 